What is going on? Ants. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Floaty Cast. Scott Steckley here, and we're going to go over a deck that won an event, uh, and it probably shouldn't have. It's it's a crazy turn of events. We had Durant take first place in a tournament last week, last Monday, I believe. A big tournament, too. And it's been taken the ladder by storm. I saw that it won. I was like, oh, that's cool. You know, like probably just somebody either, you know, got really lucky or people didn't expect it or something like that. But then I started looking at his matchups and it really does have potential to beat everything. Uh, but on the flip side, uh, I didn't think I would ever see it or play it or anything like that. And while I was recording the Mad Party video earlier this week, or last week rather, that's all I was playing was Durant, 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 Durant. And I was like, okay, let me check this out. It's very obvious that the people want to see it. So here we go. We got Durant on deck uh, i scoured the internet and by that i mean the limitless page to find what i thought was the best list and i've been playing it for about 30 minutes now that's all i've given it it's a lot of fun though so we'll go over it we got some gameplay against a super super nice deck um and we just kind of kind of got to get there right before we move on to the deck list though make sure you do me a couple favors make sure you like this video if you like our content uh subscribe and then hit that little notification bell. That way you know whenever we drop another video. It really helps the channel out. It's free for you. There's no reason not to, right? And then the other thing I need you to do is I need you to check out the podcast every Thursday. We're on Spotify. We're on you know Apple Podcasts. We're on every single system you could possibly want your podcast to be on. Uh, just look up FloatyCast on there. You'll find it there. All right, let's dig into this deck list. All right, so we got Durant. Now, disclaimer, I will say there's a couple things about this winning deck list that I don't understand. Uh, so if you do know why this is the way it is, you know, let me know in the comments down below because, uh, I, and I'll mention them, but, you know, it just doesn't kind of make any sense, right? And there are some things that I did change just because, like, why not? Um but they really didn't change the the list so this is the winning deck list this is the best list i found and it still looks pretty wacky to me right so starting things off we got the chinchino line right so you got a four three chinchino line the weird thing to me though is you got three of the glance ones and one of the coffin family ones now i know spread is a thing and that's probably why you play the 370 uh hp ones but Coffer Family seems so good in this deck just to be like, oh, you know, turn one attach, Coffer Family for three Durants or two Durants rather. But maybe it's just not that important. Maybe you just don't need to hit it. I mean, I played a lot of games and I didn't really miss it uh, except for maybe like once. But, you know, maybe it's just like you'd rather have the 10 HP. Um, and then, you know, you play the Chinchinos, which have the ability to make two, which if you're familiar with Zoroark GX or the new Leopard, um, you know what it does. Discard one, draw two. You play the two Gormandai Snorlax. This is a really great card because if you can get it out early game, it really helps you set up, and then you just get rid of them forever and ever. You never want to see that on your bench late game. Uh, you play the four Durants, obviously. This is the bread and butter of this deck. This is what this deck does. His second attack, Devour, is two colorless energy, and for each Durant in play, discard the top card of your opponent's deck, which means maximum you're discarding four cards right which doesn't seem like a lot i mean we talked about this on the podcast four cards doesn't seem like a lot but it adds up um you know you're doing four 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 your opponent's gonna have to take six prizes in total with his deck so if he doesn't miss an attack and he gets the first or you know if he doesn't miss an attack then you're taking uh well if he gets the first knockout right you're taking 20 cards off the top which means he hasn't played a single card and he's still down to 23 so the way these decks work nowadays though with the speed of them is they're getting rid of 14 15 16 cards turn one you know they're seeing as many cards as possible because they have to get it set up themselves and if they can't get set up then they can't do anything anyhow so it kind of like counters the speed of the meta by forcing your opponent to slow down and just play the slow game but then it also punishes that because if they go too slow they're just going to discard the resources anyhow it plays a one mana feed just for the spread which is another reason why i think that the uh, the minchino line may be wrong but 
that is what it is. Plays Echoing Horn, which leads a lot to a lot of great plays involving Echoing Horn, Boss, Galar Mind Stalls, you know, making sure that people cannot attack. Uh, four level ball for consistency, four quick ball for consistency, four rescue carrier for the ultimate. I need all my Durants out at all times. Uh, three scoop up net. Uh, which comes in handy to get the Snorlaxes out, get the Chinchinos out, double use Chinchino after you, you know, discard one. Uh, yell Horn to confuse both active. This is one of the coolest combos in this deck. You Yell Horn, both actives. You scoop up net, you're active, and you promote a Durant. So it's just another stall tactic. It forces them to flip heads in order to get an attack or waste more resources in order to switch and switch back. Uh, works really great against like Zacian decks. Re works really great against like Duraludon, some of the big heavy hitters that can't discard that many energy to uh, to retreat. Otherwise, they would be detrimental. Um, so you just make them rely on coin flips. Sometimes it goes in your favor. Sometimes it doesn't. It is what it is. Uh, Galar of Mine to make it harder for them to retreat so you can stick the stuff in the active. Four bosses orders for the same reason. Three Bruno for draw support. Three Marty for draw support. Two Peonia just in case you prize your Durants, um, which happens a lot. You're going to prize at least one most games. Should just try to get to the Peonias to get it out of the prizes because you're not going to take prizes with this deck. Uh, four curse shovels to make them discard even more. So now you're discarding six if they take a knockout, you know, because you're discarding four on your turn, two on their turn. That means that, you know, without drawing any cards at the beginning of the game, it only takes 10 turns to win, which means it takes even less than that, right? So let's do the math real quick. Uh, you're drawing seven, you're putting six in the prizes, right? So that is excuse me 13 i don't know why that took me so long so 13 so that's 47 cards that you start off with in your deck so now i'm discarding six per, per turn for at least four turns so what is that that's 42 that means that you could only play five cards and win seems pretty rough right then you play your energy so you play two cursed not cursed two capture energy two search the cards that you need uh you play any combination of six twin energy and double turbo the winning deck list played four double turbo i'm playing four twin energy it just made more sense i don't know why you would play double turbo uh instead of twin but i guess in this situation it doesn't matter anyhow so just play the new card um and yeah that's the list we'll dig into some games uh we'll dig into a game at least with uh mew and uh we'll see exactly how that matchup goes like I said before, Mew just goes so ham so fast that in order to get to its resources, it has to draw through its deck. So this just capitalizes on that. Um, so it's got a really good matchup against Mew. It's got a really good matchup against things that have heavy retreat costs like Zacian and Duraludon, things like that. Uh, it doesn't have a good matchup against single prizers that can just set up one and attack. Just getting that out there. You Malamar players, you Mad Party players, um, you're probably still going to win this matchup because you can literally set up one attacker and just go to the rest of the game. And Malamar has the extra benefit of shuffling back in cards. Alrighty, ants on our pants. Let's get this dance going. Oh, uh, we got uh, uh, Ad Admako56. So that's who we're playing against. I don't know if he's ready for this. Like I said before, the, the rent list is it's odd. Um, it can win. It has potential. It's it's just another control deck, but this one just doesn't really control that much. So it does rely on your opponent kind of not knowing what's going on or not being able to stop what's going on. Uh, but when it gets set up, it really does things. Um, all right. So it looks we look like we got Rose Tower, Cram, Battle VIP Pass. If this isn't you, I'm crazy. Uh, so the me matchup, you know, could be potentially pretty weird uh, i had to take a mulligan and so i think that's one for each right all right so i'm gonna go ahead and choose snorlax he's not gonna be able to knock him out hopefully i can get a good gourmandize here it doesn't look like i'm gonna be able to get rid of many cards but we shall see if you could draw to a quick ball or something like that that'd be fantastic Unless we draw a draw supporter, we will probably try to boss his Genesect up just to force him to have the switch and give us a couple more minutes to uh, set things up. 
if at all possible, right? Uh, he gets pretty much the broken start, though. So he's going to see a million cards turn one, and we are not. So we're already on the back foot. He's going to flip tails on this Grammomatic, guaranteed. Except for whenever I say that, he flips heads. So You got to give him a minus one point, though, for not having matching arts on his Genesex. I mean, but then, like, the breakdancing one's cool, but if you don't got four, man, then... You know, just play the regulars, right? I'm just kidding. I literally play whatever I have. I try to match my arts just for your sake. But uh, if it wasn't for making these videos and the deck list and stuff like that, everything would be mismatching. You could ask Aaron Rucker on that. He actually gets super upset at me for it. Uh, okay, so we're going to go here. We're going to boss up one of these Genesex, the, the ugly one. Um, I kind of want to attach Curse Shovel to the Snorlax just to get him discarding already um, and to thin out a card. I think I think that I will, um, just in case he does get an attack off, and then I'll Gorma Dice for three. So we, we got a pretty good thing going here, right? We can evolve into that one. If he knocks us out, we're going to evolve the Minchino into the Shinchino. Um... We're going to be able to Bruno for maximum amount. Hopefully draw a scoop up net in order to scoop him up and then get another Chinchino. He does get the switch, so that's good. Um, hopefully we can start getting Durant's down. He will have to discard too. Uh, and he's just drawing everything. So I don't think he knows what he's up against, which is fair because he hasn't seen a Durant yet. So he's playing Mew the way Mew plays. But aside from taking a knockout, he's actually playing directly into our hands, which is pretty sweet. So let's see what he does now. Uh, I'd assume he's going to take, yeah, he's definitely going to take the knockout here. And then we will start trying to set up. He will discard two. Uh, he's got a lot of cards in this card so far. There goes two switching options. So he's probably got two more. Oh, this is even better. So now he's going to have to retreat into something. And if we set up a Galar Mine, it's going to make it even worse. So we're going to go ahead and confuse both because I can still use my ability under confusion. Uh, and then we will get that maximum amount out of this Bruno. There's the Galar Mine. No scoop up net yet so this is an interesting scenario for us so we don't actually want to discard anything in this hand we need the rest of it to be able to attack we'll go ahead and discard the rescue carrier we play three of them um, still no scoop up net that's fine He's confused. He has to discard to retreat, which is great for us. I think I want to do this anyhow. That seems okay. <laughs> because now he's discarding at least two if he does get an attack off. And if not, we're going to come in with the... Uh, with the wombo combo and make him start discarding four. He gets the sparkle right there. He's probably going to attack with this Mew. Maybe, oh no, he'll attack with the uh, Meletius Echo. That's what I would do. Gets the tail so he can't find the switching option. He could always just retreat but he would have to discard the two energy which doesn't seem great for him so now he could just retreat for free which is fine but he still I think he has both his psychic energy in the discard no, just one. So you still need to draw into the other one. 
or switching option in order to attack with a Mew this turn. He could always retreat into the Melodious Echo and then attack with that, which is probably what he'll end up doing. trouble to find the switching option we could have just retreated and did the same thing hmm. all right well we do get him to this card too so i don't think he realizes how close to uh actually losing he is um he doesn't have many cards so i think we could afford to get rid of this other rescue carrier or maybe even this could allow our mind we don't need him to like, we don't care if he keeps attacking. Uh, yeah, let's discard the Galar Mine. Just so we can make sure that we uh, get the Durants that we need. Okay, now we can get rid of the Scoop of Net. We don't need it. Get this other Durant. Draw one off of this. We'll get rid of three. So a couple more turns like this, and we will have it. And that goes to show you, like with Mew, like it definitely takes the Mew player to run into a sticky situation, or it, you know, they have to kind of not know what's going on. Um, I think, unfortunately, our opponent didn't realize what was happening right away. Um, so now they're in a situation where, you know, we're, we're going to be able to just discard their cards. Um, we got the Peony here. We're actually, I think, going to play that, right? Because we need this twin energy, but we don't need anything else in our hand. And I would like to see different cards so there's a boss's order that'll be pretty fun um so let's put this back we need that quick ball you know what yeah let's just do this we don't need that scoop of net We're actually going to save the quick ball for next turn so we can, you know, get a discard for turn. But we don't want to discard that energy right now. It would mean certain doom for us for sure. But if they draw even one card uh, the next turn, then... All right. So instead of the quick ball, let's just level ball here. Uh, yeah. We'll level ball for the last Durant. Oh, he's not there. He is not there. Well, that's interesting. Okay, in that case, we're gonna get this. We're gonna rescue carrier for this Durant and this next turn we'll get this going we'll go ahead and we'll draw one more here quick ball away the quick ball get this we'll get rid of three here and then next turn as long as we can hit an energy um, we should be able to get it. So I thought we had another Durant, so I thought that was going to be game. Uh, but apparently we should have tried to hit it on Peonia. That's fine. Uh, that just goes to show you that, you know, everybody makes mistakes. I checked the deck um, and I thought I saw four. Apparently I only saw three. 
it's all gravy we're gonna be able to get this still um he can't draw a single card whatsoever um and he has to be able to put cards back which i don't think he has an option for uh some use do play melanie so you got to be careful but it doesn't look like this one does he's just going to attack and then hope that we don't have it we do have the benefit of having rose tower active so we're going to be able to see a lot more cards than normal. In order to hit this energy. So what we're going to do right now, just to maximize everything. Uh, we're going to probably play this Bruno, but not before we Rose Tower. And then thin the deck. See if we can get as many things out as possible. Uh, we do have all the energy available that we could ever want. So uh, we stand a pretty high chance of hitting this. There it is. Perfect. All right. And, you know, so we'll just do this. And just for good measure, we'll go ahead and get the Durant back. Because he needs to join his friends on the victory screen. And there you go. Victory for Durant. Zero damage done discarding everything like i said the the deck definitely relies on your opponent missing his outs getting put in a sticky situation or just being unaware of what's going on uh but it is a lot of fun to play it is it, it is another win con and it is a version of control which is something we've been missing for a while um i wouldn't say it's great but it has potential so play it get good with it let me know what you think and then uh you know leave suggestions and tips and tricks for me because i'm trying to figure it out myself down in the comments down below so until next time peace